Dynamics. Today I'm with Matt Conti, our lead mechanical and optical engineer here at Dio Dynamics. He's going to walk us through some of the basics and give some of his rationale behind the design of the Stage Series light bars that we now offer. Uh, so without any further ado, let's let Matt take it away and kind of walk you through some of the things you see here, some of the standard light bar uh, options here on the market and what makes ours different. Matt? Thank you. So I thought I'd basically try to show off today what the existing light bars are on the market and what sets ours apart. I did all of the optical design um, and most of the mechanical design for this light bar. So I feel pretty qualified to speak about this. So I'll first go through sort of what you typically see, the uh, 3D, 4D, 5D stuff you see on eBay, Amazon, from our competitors and such. What makes them good, what makes them bad, and why we decided to go the more uh, non-traditional route of a total internal reflector type lens. So to get things started is your pretty basic standard um, eBay, Amazon type bowl reflector. We get a shallow bowl with what they often say is really high power Cree LEDs. So these do are, always have a lot of lumens, very bright because they do pack a lot of chips into the space. But what ends up happening a lot of times when you got such a shallow reflector bowl such as this is that when these uh, light rays go out, typically the bowl is designed to try and focus all the light forward. So when you got light beams coming out, it's gonna go straight, you know, coming out here, go there. But what ends up happening when you got such a shallow height is a lot of these light rays that are coming out of here, they just escape out into nowhere. So instead of getting all that light focused where you want it, uh, in an area up here, you end up with a lot of extra flood fill, which no matter whether somebody says they are spot or flood or combo, if you got a really short bowl like that, it doesn't matter what somebody's gonna say, it's, you can't beat physics. Uh, so, it's basically an extend out there. However, uh, oftentimes you see, like on some of the more high-end lights, a very deep reflector bowl. Hopefully you can see that there. This is probably inch and a half or so deep, only four chips. We know that this is a very powerful light bar, uh, pretty decent. The reason that is because, sort of like what I just showed there, what happens when you end up extending that reflector bowl out more is that instead of that light going out elsewhere, you can kind of redirect that forward and some of these other rays will kind of go where you want it to go. But at the same time, you're still going to get some that are lost no matter what you do, just going out this way. Uh, so it's fairly efficient if you get a very deep reflector bowl. The trade-off there is you have to have a much larger light bar. You usually end up not having as many sources, but there's always those uh, engineering trade-offs that you have to make. Now the other popular light bar style we see a lot is what is usually billed as 4D. Um, kind of this Oxbeam brand is one that we always find. Um, looks good, I mean, kind of like it. Uh, so what's usually happening inside of those is you got this lens um, that is standing off about an yeah. inch or so off of there. So what, in, so what the theory is is Obviously, you're going to try to make a circular spot, so you've got these light rays that come in, bounce, and then go straight out there, uh, like this, uh, once as you go straight through. So you're kind of focusing that light like you would a typical lens, but sort of like with the reflector bowl, any of that light that isn't passing through that lens or hitting this uh, bowl is just going to get lost into space and basically kind of lose that potential light output. So you end up needing the more powerful chips or overdrive them. You need a lot of sources. So basically what I ended up deciding to do is what we call a total internal reflection lens. So you can see it's a little bit different than what you typically find. Hopefully I got that centered in there well. Um, so basically what ends up happening here is you kind of combine a reflector, a reflector with a lens sort of in theory. So what ends up happening with total internal reflection is you got two different materials. So let's say material out here is air, which is kind of standard. And then material in here, which we use is a, a type of acrylic called PMA. So if you have a difference in the index of refraction, um, this one ends up happening is rays that are coming in will often bend. And that's why like when you look through a river, lake or something like that, 
you get that ripple effect or you know if you try to stick your hand straight into a water you, to catch a fish you're not going to find it because it's elsewhere um so that's sort of the imaging theory behind that so basically if you can get this uh, ray to be at a less than what's called the critical angle it will just end up bouncing off of that surface if you have a highly po polished optical surface so what ends up happening in something like a TIR is it comes out it hits this small pocket on the inside bounces and then will bounce straight up and through and the ones that are going straight more vertical those are yeah, the things dying here those will go bouncing this way Let's see if I can find a different pen so basically you end up collecting all of the light rather than it escaping elsewhere um, so even ones that are coming way off to the side which on here you'd lose here it's going to come out and it's going to get redirected out through there or the ones that would be coming way up through here you know, kind of hit this, that'll bounce there, and that'll still get collected and put exactly on target where you want it to be. Now, with our lenses, um, there's also very small ridges on the top. I ended up picking that because instead of having a really tight spot pattern, usually five degrees or so, using the experience that I had in rally cars at night, I wanted to have a little bit more wider profile. So this lens has very small ridges, less than a millimeter circles that pretty much help bend the light more. So light ray will come up, bounce, and then hit somewhere else, or come up, bounce, and hit this way. So instead of a circular spot, you end up with more of a rectangular beam pattern, um, which is pretty easy to see here versus a really tight spot pattern. Um, this little demo unit I ended up doing, I cut off the entire side of this thing. It kind of shows like how much light you end up not really losing. I mean, typically you'd see this spread out here versus we've got this part that I cut off. It's similar to this ox beam where you can see a whole lot more picked up right here um, versus you know, we're in the same location. You can't even see anything until you get pretty close. So you can kind of see what's actually happening that TRR is not just theory it actually works so why don't a lot of other companies do these TIRs well first of all it is kind of tough to design um, you can buy TIRs off the shelf you'll find them in catalogs if you search for it but if you don't have it designed specifically for that source that you're using in our case it's really really tiny Luxion CDS chips if you don't have it designed specifically for that source these things will you know it will work, but it's not going to be that great. So let's say, let's get rid of some of these lines here. So let's say you now we had the source that's a little bit bigger, comes out, comes here, but it's not, that ray isn't going exactly where we thought it was going to go. So it'll end up kind of bouncing this way, or if it comes out, hits, it might bounce a little bit this way. So it's going to work, but it's going to be nowhere near as efficient as if you take the time to design and put together a system that works with that source that you uh, used. And not only just the design is really tough, it's also the actual tooling of this. With a typical bowl reflector, that's a fairly easy part to make. It doesn't cost much to have something plastic injected and then metalized so you get that reflectivity. However, when you're doing these really complex plastic pieces, you know, these are perfectly polished surfaces um, that takes a lot of manpower and time as well as some pretty precise machining to get all these little ridges and stuff like that it might be kind of hard to tell but if you pick up our light bars you can see there's a lot of quality that goes into it so this tooling cost uh, about four to five times as much as a traditional plastic injection mold so yeah it does cost us a lot more up front but we know that the quality will speak for itself you get end up with an incredibly, you end up with an incredibly efficient light bar. Um, to put some uh, things into perspective, this single six-inch light bar has the power of this 30-inch ox beam. Uh, same thing, like the actual power that you're putting down in the road. This little six-inch has the exact same uh, 30-inch, just because you can harness all that electrical, uh, optical. 
energy and put it on target exactly where we want it to be. So I hope that was a little bit of an overview of what we got going and what sets our light bars apart. Uh, like I said, I did all the optical design for this stuff and mechanical and I'm pretty proud of what we've done and uh, hope that you enjoy it. Thanks Matt, we appreciate your help and uh, good work on that design. Stay sure these light bars are available on our website.